the stream is now live. Sorry about the technical issues. We've uh, been jumping through a few hoops. I'll tell you all about it one day, I'm sure. I'm just going to hang on a bit uh, for a second while we're updating uh, social media as to where new links are, and obviously uh, also the forum. Somebody just asked on the forum, when will you start? I'm here, but just in a different place. So, uh, oh, we uh, we have life. People are joining us. Hooray. So uh, I'm very sorry about that. Um, there's a technical issue with the Dorico channel, which we will go into another time. Um, and uh, as long as you can hear me, we will carry on here. And uh, we will put this video on the Dorico channel uh, as soon as we can, once we've finished. Uh, so, welcome. Um, this is the first Discover Dorico session. Uh, my name is John uh, from Steinberg, and we're aiming to show various features and answer questions about Steinberg's new notation program, Dorico. Um, now, I did say um, that we might start with some of the basics of Dorico um, and you know, um, show some of those type of things. But all the people who responded via the Facebook group, um, by email, um, if you want to email, you can email us on discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Um, they all requested that we start looking at frames and master pages. Um, so that will be the focus of today's session. Um, and thank you to all those who um, submitted questions, um, asked me questions by email and on uh, Facebook uh, as to how to shape this session. Um, I'd like to know from you what you'd like to see, um, uh, what you'd like me to cover in any of these sessions. Um, and so we can, you know, um, they can be the, the kind of things you want to do. Um, there's a couple of people saying the volume is low and I hear nothing. So hopefully, you'll get a bit better and I'll get a bit closer to a microphone. I'll just cuddle it a bit more. I'm slightly, I think yeah, you may find um, volumes maybe, you know, um, uh, hopefully they'll sort themselves out in a second. Um, I'll also try and make sure I don't deafen you if we play anything from Dorico as well. Better, okay, we'll continue. Um, so yes, my apologies to anyone looking for a session covering basics. Um, in some of today might get more complex than you wanted, um, hopefully not. Uh, if there are any of the basics that aren't already covered by our other uh, videos, there's lots of videos on our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash Dorico, and they cover a lot of the basic note input and various other things. Um, then, you know, um, if there's other things you want to hear or you want videos or you want us to cover them in more detail in these sessions, then please email me on discoverdorico at steinberg.de and you can help shape the next session. The next session, we're aiming to do these monthly. So the next session should be on the 23rd of February at uh, 4 p.m. UK time. Um, unless all the overwhelming feedback is that it's the wrong time of day, the wrong time of month, or uh, anything else, and we need to do it at a different time. So, you know, uh, feedback's appreciated. Please be nice. So, anyway, the first thing um, I had a question, uh, oh, well, a few couple of questions actually, about moving frames. And just to kind of cover all of the what that might mean, and to make sure I didn't mean, you know, you didn't mean moving music between frames or actually moving frames, we'll try and cover them all. Um, I'm also going to try and keep this session brief. So um, YouTube has created a pause button, uh, I think just for me, um, so that if you need to uh, watch this again later and follow it along and you know, pause it, then uh, feel free to do so. So here is a uh, an example score, and uh, the question in this one was, if I select um, this note here, um, how do I get this bar, uh, sorry, this um, system here onto page one? Um, so I know in some of the music programs, you probably you know, drag some things around, or you could make the stave smaller potentially. Uh, but how do you just say, look, well, I've, all this stuff here, I would like it to all be on page one, please. So I've selected the first note here. And on uh, the end over here on this bar line, I'm going to hold down the Apple key. I'm using a Mac um, control on a PC. Uh, so I've got that bar line selected, and I've got this first note selected. And in engrave mode, I'm going to click this button here, which is make into frame. So now what we have is uh, 
it's made all of this into one frame, uh, one page in our case, uh, one frame of music so that it all fits. And then you see over here, we've now got uh, an extra system here, which actually you probably you don't want. Um, and uh, you could do something similar, but actually what you need to do here is click on the frame break and in the properties panel at the bottom, which is uh, Apple or Control 8 to, to open that, you just need to tick this little option here or uh, toggle this option, which is wait for next frame break. So what Dorico is doing there is it's not going to reformat the um, the page um, and use other frame uh, other frames or other pages until it uh, gets to another frame break. Now there isn't one, so everything now fits on that page. So there, in a couple of simple steps, you've said here's a range of music that I want to put using Control Select. Just click on the first item and the last item and use the Make into Frame button. That's put it all into that first page. And then um, after that, actually, in, in this particular case, the other trick was to select the frame break and just use this wait for next frame break. So everything else is now fitting onto that page. So there's uh, that particular part is done. Um, there's also um, a couple of other things we're going to look at uh, in, in this session about moving frames around. So the next thing I'm going to look at actually, um, I'm going to start a, a new piece. I'm going to get myself into a situation that you might try and do if you were creating a worksheet. So I'm going to start a new empty project. I do tend to use a lot of shortcuts. There's a little um, box down in the bottom left hand corner, which is showing you a lot of the shortcuts and the keys that I press as I press them, because I might forget to tell you what they were. Um, you know, hopefully that uh, will cover all bases. I'll remember it will tell you and uh, we'll be okay. So I'm going to um, start here, add a new uh, solo player. Um, I'm going to just use a flute as uh, a, an instrument, doesn't matter. I'm going to start creating a scale worksheet for flute. So um, I have a flute. Actual fact, in this particular case, I probably don't want to display the flute name. So uh, what I'm going to do is go into layout options, which is um, Apple or command shift L for layout options. And in the staves and systems category, uh, I'm going to turn these off. So the staff labels on the first system and the staff labels on subsequent systems, I'll turn both of those off and press apply. So we don't have the name anymore. That's good. So if I double click here, of course, we'll jump into write mode and I'll enter some notes for a uh, scale of C. There we go. Uh, I do have a MIDI keyboard here, um, but of course you could use a QWERTY keyboard if you wanted to. Um, now, so, so I've got the first one, and then if I go back to setup mode, I'm using uh, command one to jump modes, so command one and command two for write mode. Uh, command one for setup mode, and this is my first flow, and I'll call that C. Plus down here for add a new flow. And I'll call that B. And now what you'll see Dorico has done is on page two, we have a new flow with D. So if I double click here, I'm going to use uh, Shift K for key signature. I'm going to press capital D for D major, press enter. And now I can enter the notes for D. Uh, it's good so far. So this is the kind of you know, situation you might have got yourself in if you were trying to create a worksheet. You think, great, I've got two individual flows, but I'd like these all on one page, please. Um, is there a keyboard shortcut in right mode to move the selected notes up or down an octave? Yes, there is. I'm just um, also remembering there's a live chat and you can ask questions. Um, if you use, um, you'll see I've done it twice there, um, command and alt and up and down, then you can move selected notes up and down an octave. Um, obviously, similar shortcuts appear on PC. Um, so we got into this situation now. We've got these uh, these two frames, but I'd like them both on the same page. Now, in engrave mode, you do have frames, and you can play with these and move frames around and that kind of thing. But actually, the main thing you've got here if you're creating a worksheet is that there are master pages that are trying to put music in the right places for you. Dorico is trying to say, and the defaults are, when you start a new flow, it's pro probably a new movement or a new idea or something that you probably want to start on a new page. So the master pages are designed, um, and at the moment you can see page one here and page two, and they're both using the first 
uh, master page. Now, in actual fact, for my worksheet, I don't really want the first or the default master pages um, with big music frames on or anything else. What I actually want is to click on this plus button here. And the quickest thing to do is just to create a new, I'm going to call it worksheet, a new master page. It isn't based on anything. It isn't based on first or default, it's just based on none. And it's a custom type. And press OK. So now down here in the right-hand panel in master pages, I have a worksheet master page, which has nothing on it. So that's kind of a blank canvas to start from. So up here in the pages section on the right-hand side, if I uh, insert a master page change here, I can say from page one, use my worksheet master page. And the range is from this page onwards. So every page after this, just use my worksheet. Ta-da! Well, what actually we've done, it looks like we've deleted everything. Um, but actually, that's, that's not quite the case. What we've done here is we've applied a master page that has no music frames. So there's nowhere for the music to go. Um, so if I toggle here, the frame section on, this is where I can start adding my frames back in for my worksheet. So if I click on this middle one here, this is a text frame. So I can type in here and say uh, scales worksheet. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do here is say that this needs to be, yeah, well, yeah, I'll do that in a second. We'll do formatting in a second. So uh, and down here, I'll add a music frame. So here is a music frame. And by default, Dorico gets, oh, by the way, um, I've got things we can put in this. So uh, it's created um, here, it's created a new frame chain. We're not using a master page. So it hasn't used an M, A, from a master page. It's L, which is the local one. So it's created a local one, happens to be B. And in here from flows, I can say, actually, I only ever want flow, uh, the first flow, which I called C, is my um, scale of C. Um, and you can make this, you know, uh, whatever size you need this box to be. So in fact, I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. And underneath it, um, we could then have another music frame. So underneath it, I'll put another music frame in here, uh, like that. I, I did double click by accident, so I missed. Um, so in here, I'm going to say, actually, I just want the flow called D. So here is my D scale. So now, actually, you've got control over where the music's going to sit on the page, um, where you want to put it, and what you want to do with it. So for my scales worksheet, I'm going to say that this bit actually is going to be a title. And uh, we'll move this down a bit. You could also, uh, there may be other things that you want to do on here. So if you want the music to kind of um, stretch to fill this frame a bit more more than it normally would because it's normally expecting you to uh, add other music. Then in uh, layout options, um, Apple Shift L, if I go into note spacing, then I can say uh, the only justify final system inflow when more than. Well, uh, if it's only a little bit full, can you still justify it, please? That'd be really handy. So now the music's going to fill uh, fill those. You might also say, well, um, maybe I want the stage to be a bit bigger. So in layout options, we could say in page setup that I'd like these to be 10-point staves. So I'd like them to be quite large for my worksheet. If we move this dialog, you'll see they're getting bigger. Uh, you might also say that uh, it may be from uh, notation options. Ooh. Um, yeah, we'll make the last bar line a normal bar line and we could have done that manually on on both of them i suppose so you could you, know, you can select one of these and do shift b and say actually i just like a normal bar line in there please uh, so there's a couple of options there and then if you you know to uh, add various other things to this worksheet um let's say we uh, we're going to make it some other text in here to tell people what to do. So uh, we'll say in here, we'll have a new text box and we can say name the scale from the key. Draw a line, match the notes with the correct piano key. Um, so let's see. We probably want to add a graphic in here for a piano so that you can, you've got something to add, uh, line it up with, and draw your lines between. So from piano, we'll have a piano. 
So we can add a little graphic in there for our worksheet. We could carry on um, doing the same kind of things. But you see, the, the, the idea is here that uh, flexibility is you've now not really broken, but you've uh, you know, not broken master pages, but you basically created your own blank master page that you can use for your scales worksheet. Now you could have, you know, added in the the title um, using a token, and you could have made this a, a, a master page if you're going to be doing this layout often. But if it's a completely bespoke kind of, um, you know, um, worksheet layout, then it may be just best as, uh, down here to start with a, a blank master page before you do anything else. Um, now, uh, somebody said I had a question on a unit of measurement in millimeters rather than in points. Um, we do have here from uh, the raster all size box, um, you can choose options here and they're in um, 0.5 uh, of a millimeter. So if you want to choose them that way, I just happen to um, type in the space size here in points. Um, so kind of one option for flows and you know music frames and where you want to put things. I know Daniel has shown some others before um, with, so the, the idea is that the flows are, can be individual little bits of music that you can put literally um, anywhere on the page if you want to. Um, one of the other examples that um, I know he's been used before um, is this one. Um, so this Beethoven piece, um, and if we switch to engrave mode, again, you can see all the, the frame boxes, music boxes and text boxes that we have on here. Um, now, this particular example uh, was um, Henley looking at uh, you know, how much text was suitable on a page. I think page two of this also has a lot more text on it and decided that was a bit much. But the idea here is that if we look in uh, in setup mode, that although you, um, you know, you've got your piano instrument and the sonata, you've also got here the X, EXX1, which is the little example that they've copied at the bottom here. And in engrave mode, we can see a bit more about what we're doing. So if we turn on the frames uh, little option here, then you can see, well, actually, while the text is in the way, it's a bit more tricky to see. But um, here, this is where you can choose, you know, which one you're filtering, which layout you're showing, what it is, which little bit of music you want to show. And this is then a, a completely movable, um, you can change the size on it or the you know, the system size on that, just particularly just for that little bit and float the text around it, you know, however you need to do it. Um, so there are lots and lots of different examples that you can use for uh, for frames and how you want to, to create them. But also with things like um, master pages. So master pages are basically your template for how things are structured. And um, as we saw in the worksheet, Dorico is trying very hard um, to not make your music disappear. But if you really want to, you can you know, get, get complete control over various bits. Um, some of those things might just be very small things. So for example, here, um, this is a, a bit of Chopin. If I click on page one up here in engrave mode, it's highlighted here the master page, which is the first master page. And if I click on two and three, it's highlighting the default master page. Um, now, master pages always have two pages because if you've started a new flow, it may be a left-hand page or a right-hand page. So you always define uh, both. And you'll see here that pages two and three, of course, are a left-hand page and a right-hand page, which is yeah, for using both sides of, uh, of the default master page set. So by default, Dorico has, for every flow, it will the first page of every flow will be using the first master page because that one has the title on it and the composer and is the most likely, I suppose, um, scenario. Like a new movement, for example, would probably want uh, to include some of those. And all of the subsequent pages will then use default. So this means that you can do uh, very useful things like um, we, if we go to uh, file project info and for uh, the particular flow, we can say we can put in a copyright mark. So we could say copyright, uh, what is it, 2017, uh, I'll say, come did this. That will then appear at the bottom of page one. If you wanted to include anything like that on the other pages, then you can edit your default master pages. And you simply double click on one of these. 
and then if I zoom out a little bit, you'll see here are the two master pages with the frames in, and you can see we've got some uh, tokens up here as well. So you could say, actually, I want to add a copyright at the bottom. So uh, if I select here and move the music frame up a little bit to give a bit of space, and then down here, I can draw in a new text box. Then in here, I could just say, leave its flow copyright. Uh, well, we'll leave that one left for a, a change. And if I do the same on this page, talk amongst yourselves while I type. Uh, and make that right. So when I close the master page editor on the other pages, we now have our copyright at the bottom. And as Dorico's cre now creating music, in fact, it's needed to because I've made the uh, frames a bit smaller, it will carry on using those as those page templates. Now those could, it could be that on page one, you always want to include a logo for something. Um, there's there's all sorts of um, things that you you might want to do uh, when you're using master pages. Um, one example that somebody uh, had in the week was that they wanted to create a title page for parts. So again, you can use um, master pages effectively for this. So what they were actually asking was how do I kind of uh, copy and paste some of this information around? Um, now, while we might look at in the future, kind of copy and pasting um, flows and boxes and you know um, some of those layouts and things. Um, in some cases, you won't need that. So here's a part um, for uh, well, obviously West Side Story. Um, and in engrave mode, uh, what we can do here is if I press plus, I'll make a new title master page. Um, okay. So down here now we have a bit like with our worksheet, we have a new title master page. So again, this has two pages, of course, as always. So in here for my title page, I'm going to add a big graphics frame. And this time I'm going to use, I think we have a big image. There we go. And then just because it's the first page and you might want to know um, who it is who's doing things and who needs to play this, in a text box, I'm going to add a layout name. Uh, and then on this page, because obviously it, it may be that we need a right hand page or a left hand page, I'll just do the same very quickly. So here is a graphics box with a graphic in it. Somebody has said tokens. Sorry, I'm reading the live chat, I've just remembered. Um, Yes, I do have to type those. Uh, sorry about that. So in my text box here, um, I know that the tokens, um, they're always going to involve curly brackets. Start from that. And then if you type layout name and then finish the app. So when I close my master page editor, um, Here's the part that we had. What I will do now is I select my page up here and I can say insert a new page. So I've clicked this button um, at the left at the left down here. Insert a page before page one and use the title master page. Press OK. There we go. So the token was layout name, which is the same as the, the top left corner up here, which says the uh, part that we're using, the part name effectively. Um, and there's the big image. So now if you want to apply that to any other parts, you can just pick another one and you can do the same. You can say for this one, insert a page with a title on it, please. Ta-da. Um, so creating title page. Now, of course, if you want to edit that title page and say, well, actually, we need to include some extra text at the bottom or something else. All you need to do is edit the master page um, for the part down here. And uh, you can update all of those at the same time. If you want any more information on tokens, um, there is actually a PDF that lists the tokens. And they're things like project uh, information and flow information. 
So from our project info dialog in the file menu, um, here we have the project information, which has the title for the project, but also each flow that you have can also have its own title. You'll often see, well, most of the time, you'll see when you start something in Dorico, it'll say flow one. Um, now you can either up here edit the, the information for the title so that uh, it, the, each flow has its own title. Um, it also will um, pick it up from setup mode as well. So if you've labeled your flow down here, then it will pick it up from there as well. Um, the, if you want the full list of uh, tokens and options, if you either check out our forum, the Steinberg forum, um, or also it's a document that was put on the Facebook page. So facebook.com forward slash group forward slash Dorico. The group or groups. The Dorico uh, page, anyway, uh, it's been added on there. So if you want to download it from there as a reference, then uh, then you can do. Um, so kind of a, obviously title pages, if you're just doing the score, you don't have to do it as a master page. Um, so on our score back here, if you really wanted to create a, a title page for here, then you could just do that with a blank page. And you could say, insert a page here. Uh, you don't use a master page, you insert a blank page and, you know, that, that's fine. But for things like um, parts or anything where you need to replicate that multiple times, um, then uh, that, that's all you know, the, the much more useful if you're using master pages as your template. Um, somebody said, was it updated for 10.03 or 10.030 as we'll call it? 10.030 uh, isn't out yet. And the version I'm using now is 10.020. Uh, so I'm not doing anything that you can't do right now today. Um, even, I suppose, uh, if you use the trial version, then uh, you can do all this today. Um, so one other thing I want to do, because, um, like I said, they've, uh, they've asked me to keep this brief, at least for the first session. Um, somebody, because they were talking about moving music around onto different pages and different flows, then I had another thought, which was, oh, okay, there's a slightly different way of doing that. So what Dorico does by default we said is when you start a new flow it will start a new page so if i go into setup mode here and we've got a flow called mozart um and also um let's see uh, i might may just get some other music because then i can uh, copy and paste things in and that might make things a little bit easier and a bit quicker uh, so two seconds So we're going to take some Bartok. I'm sure they would be, they would be great friends, Bartok and Mozart. I'll move that one out of the way for a minute. So I'm going to create a new um, a new flow down here in our Mozart piece. So I'll click the plus icon. I get a new flow. Do that correctly, Bartok. There we go. Um, now uh, Bartok uh, doesn't want the soprano or piano so with the flow selected i'll untick those two players and down here i can add some more players so i would like a violin in fact i'd like two violins so shift p to get the add players typing the name of the instrument i want and pressing enter and i'm lazy with cello so i don't type violin cello always my fingers get muddled up i just type cello and press enter uh, now mozart doesn't want those four instruments so you'll see it in the middle of the screen it's updating but basically we're we're back where we were now so we've got the soprano and the piano for flow one and flow two has two uh two violins viola and cello and by default it's put that onto uh, the next page so um let me just I'll just turn the volume down a little bit just in case uh, anything gets too loud on the on dorico itself so, so now um, we've sorted out the instruments. Um, we'd like to add, uh, probably add a bit of music to this. So I'm just gonna uh, cheat for a second and I'm gonna select some music in another file and copy and paste that into this one. It saves me entering all the music. So into here, I'll press paste and uh, here we have some Bartok. Now, what you might want to do is um, start this in this big white gap that we have on page two. Um, so if we go to engrave mode, and uh, zoom in a little bit here, uh, we can turn on our little frames option here, which then gives us frame control over doing things. And if I drag this bit up here, 
I can make that frame smaller. So that's uh, where that one ended. And now underneath it, I'd like another music frame so I can put some more music in it. So in here, I'll drag out another box. And by default, it said, oh, well, um, we want to start again, maybe. And there are filters here, so you can filter for the flow you want and the players and that kind of thing if you only wanted one specific bit of music. But actually, I just want to tell it to carry on. So I'm going to go back and say frame chain. I'd like actually the master frame chain. Uh, and then it says, okay, well, so if it's the master frame chain, and there already was one here, so this, therefore, is, an, is frame two. Uh, and you say, well, great, but there's no music in it. So where is it? And that's because in layout options, there's an option here that flows, always start on a new page uh, to try and make, generally, things make sense. We're overriding that, so we'll say, allow an existing page. So I'll press apply and press close. So now... My music starts on the same page uh, and it will now then carry on because I'm still using the same uh, master frame um, set, which is still using the same master pages. So it's still using default. It will carry on now through the rest of the music. Here we go. Uh, and carry on as you, as you were. Um, if I want to label this, uh, in fact, we, you know, let's, let's do that. So in here, I'll say this is Chateau and we'll give the font and the confusing confusing confusion well there we go so that's a kind of a, just a another uh, example of uh, an, an, another way of, of using um, master pages and also layouts and frames and how you might want to do them and um you know and like i said at any point if you decide you need to you know, switch some of these things around there are also filters for these so as you saw with the worksheet that we did at the very beginning if you need to choose a particular flow or even a particular instrument then you can very easily um switch between those uh, to find out what it is you need so um just bear with me a second while i check the live chat thank you for spelling bartok correctly <laughs> Um, must you create the instruments for Bartok up front before you copy and paste music from the other score? Um, yes, because it may be that you want to copy and paste from a piano to a violin. So I was, in this case, deliberately copying from violin staves to violin staves, because otherwise I would have copied this, that music that I'd, uh, I would have copied the music and pasted it into the soprano and piano that was there. Uh, already, which you might want to do for an arrangement, but uh, in, in this particular case, no, I, I wanted those instruments. Um, I suppose the other important thing to, to note with flows is that because they're completely separate pieces of music, then you don't have to do anything regarding um, uh, key signature changes, time signature changes. You don't have to say, uh, do anything around hiding any of those. They're completely separate pieces of music. Um, so uh, what would have happened to the fourth staff if you'd done that? It, well, the third and fourth staff, well, the, yeah, the fourth staff would have uh, just not copied over. It would have just not had anywhere to go. Um, and in, um, in setup mode, this is where you can decide for each flow which instruments you want to appear in that, um, you know, do, do which instruments you want to appear or which players, really, in our case, which players you want to appear in those flows, because actually um, they're quite separate. Now, this could be uh, a, a book where you, you, you only need the score layout and that's fine just to show musical examples of things. Um, or it could be that you want the layout and, you know, it's going to create parts for you automatically as well. Um, and it will, Dorico will figure that out for you too. Um, so... I was asked to keep these uh, sessions to about 20 minutes. I believe I've already failed, um, but I hope we, I've kind of shown you um, lots of the answers that people had asked um, for this particular session. Um, it was a bit more of a techie session, I'll admit. Um, now, what I'd love to know from, from you all, either via Facebook or via uh, email, on uh, discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Discoverdorico is all one word. Um, it's a German thing. Um, what I'd love to know is, so what would you like to see in the next session? Um, do you need to see more detail? Um, do you want me to detail things kind of 
even more about which shortcuts we're using, how we do things. Do you want actually, uh, this is all a bit complex, complex right now. Can you go back to basics and show me how to do some more basic things? Or actually, hey, there's um, pages and pages of stuff on engraving options. We'd love to know all the options for ties. Um, I'd love to know what it is you'd, you'd like to know. Um, as I said at the beginning, the plan the plan is to do these sessions monthly. Um, we'll do them live. You can ask questions on the live chat. Um, somebody would already like more detail. So uh, they've said, keep it this way. Uh, keeping it short is also good. So that's, that's good. Um, so tell us for the next session. As I said, um, the, the next session at the moment, the plan is to do the same time, which is another Thursday on the 23rd of February. So it's the last Thursday in the month we're basically aiming at at the moment. Um, and tell me what would you like to see in the next session? Um, uh, and we'll then, you know, um, go forward and um, tell you in more detail everything we can. Um, as I said, this will be available um, on our YouTube channel. So if you want to go back over and watch this, um, there'll be a slight delay because at the moment, obviously, we're on the Steinberg channel. We will move this to the Dorico channel. So it will be on youtube.com forward slash Dorico. Um, and um, there are also lots of other very useful videos on um, that Anthony has done on how to get started with things. They're very short, kind of two, three minutes, how to do various tasks so you can learn things and follow them very, very easily. Um, but yeah, if there's other things and uh, other things you'd like to see, then, then please do. Also, of course, you can talk to um, myself or communicate with us. Uh, you can by email also our forum and uh, you'll notice Daniel is on the forum quite a lot as are a lot, a lot of the other guys in the development team uh, and of course on Facebook so um, yeah get in touch and uh, thank you for all attending thank you very much bye <laughs>